what are you thinking most of the time besides seeing the yellow brick road <laughs> and other hallucinations? What are you thinking most of the time? I know you're not a type of person to count sheep. What are you thinking during this 53 hours? Well, you say not count sheep, but you're counting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I mean, every, a lot of the climbers I know, I keep telling them they've got to expand their repertoire. But um, <laughs> Ed Vistiers, for instance, he counts, oh, the bear went over the mountain with every step. And you, out in the ocean, and there are only three of us on the planet who do these long, long extreme swims, so there aren't many people who do them. Unlike, and trust me, I have such a high regard for the Earth's adventurers, the, the alpine climbers who go up K2. But one thing they don't deal with, and I don't know what altitude sickness is and, and that extreme cold of losing your fingers to frostbite, but one thing they don't deal with is sensory deprivation. They always have their sight and their hearing. And when you're out there in the ocean, even on, you know, Dee and Pauline and I have done hundreds and hundreds of short six hour, eight hour, 10 hour, 12 hour training swims. Even in that short of time, you've got a tight cap over your head. You're trying to keep the heat in your head. You've got fogged over goggles and you're turning your head 52 times a minute this way. After just a few hours, you are with Stephen Hawking <laughs> and the majesty of the universe. You're in childhood <coughs> memories. You're in a right lobe, left lobe confusion. You are in a true state of not being in the concrete world of, I'm thinking of this and I've got it together. You know, you're out there. They have a lot, hard time getting a hold of me, saying, stop, come in for the feeding now, you know. But after 30 hours, 40 hours, 50 hours, that's, a, that's an exponential trip, you know, out in your mind. So I had, you know, definitely thoughts. Um, interesting, i tell you the truth, I'm going to miss that. Um, <laughs> You know, it's not like you just take take a you know a hit of window pane acid and, <laughs> and get to that same place. That's the easy way. Uh, but you are in you are in that kind of a state. Your your mind is tripping out, and it's uh it's it's interesting. You know, I've got a good mind, and it was tripping out. But I also use counting different languages, uh, you know, whole different logarithms. I'd count to uh, a thousand using every other stroke of the left arm in English, always in this order, and then German, and then Spanish, and then French, in those accents. I'm hearing it in my mind. And I had a playlist of 85 songs. Some of them, you know, those magical Neil Young Beatles, you know, that, that sort of era, that's my music. Um, and those would engage me. I could sing Janis Joplin's Bobby McGee, me and Bobby McGee, a thousand times in a row. And hearing her voice, every single syllable, hearing the guitar strums, hearing her breath. I don't have headphones on, I'm just, I'm just in it out there. When I decide a thousand, I don't get bored at 683. And I'm singing that song exactly the way Janice recorded it from Buzz of Flatman, waiting for a train. All the way to the end. La 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 hey 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 Bobby McGee yeah. 683. <laughs> <laughs> so when I get to a thousand, I am at nine hours and forty-five minutes to the second. So that's kind of I'm trying to keep my mind together out there, and sometimes. You know, you can't think of those complicated lyrics and you're into childhood, you know, <laughs> just getting through the time somehow, but, but the deep mind is also sometimes working and you're, you're into thoughts about this planet and the future of it. All the people who lived on this planet before, do we remember them? Um, so it's a it's a it's an exercise in humanity as well. You know, it's interesting. <laughs>